So in 2023, after many years of planning and saving, um, we did a major renovation on the farmhouse and the garage. Um, the garage was built somewhere around 1984, I think. Um, houses from the 1960s, I believe. Um, we decided to tear down the old garage. It was, yeah, it's in the concrete was failing. The in, anyway, it was it was bad. It was it was fully insulated, but the rodents had gotten into it, and all the insulation was it was bad. And uh, we uh, essentially tore it down piece by piece, saved all the materials. Um, we were able to reuse some parts in various parts in the construction project and uh, sold the steel and the interior um, OSB off the walls and stuff and uh, we used the you can see we used the excavator just because it was handy to take down the truss and, and see we broke up all the concrete and hauled it away <laughs> So there was a lilac bush in between the house and the garage. My mom had moved it here. My mom's 88 um, this year. She moved it here from her parents' place. So it actually moved to the first house that her and my dad lived at, and then she moved it to here. So we really didn't want to destroy it, so we dug it out, and you can see that with the payload, and we carried it to someplace else in the yard and uh, replanted it. So far, so far, good. It's, 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 it's growing. So the first day we were able to, you know, finish all the demo on the garage and dug all the old concrete out. Here's a pile of supplies. We got our ICFs from a place called uh, Energy Wise Building Products down by west of the Minnesota, Twin Cities in Minnesota. Um, they also sell um, or rent uh, forms. And we, and you can see here, we're digging out for a basement for the on digging out the basement for the addition on the house we essentially added approximately um it's a 24 by 23 foot addition minus the porch area which was like 10 by 10 by 11. and then here we're digging out the footings for the new garage um up when we're up our in part of minnesota you got to be down about five feet with your frost footings um and of course it, it varied you know with the grade and we had a bunch of fill to put in um, after the frost walls went up but you know here um, you see we got strings here laying out all the forms for the footings and um, we used uh, what they call the bag method for our footings where we just laid two by fours on one on each side at your grade level and then laid uh, essentially uh, house wrap material stapled to the side of the two by six two by fours and that held the concrete in and you can see that you saw the the uh, concrete truck there in the, a few minutes ago a minute ago and here we got all the footings done and they uh all the way around the the garage and the house basement the um and here's the basement footings and the transition from the garage to the basement it was a a little warm this day this i think is the day we poured and you can see the day after we poured we got two inches of rain and it completely flooded our basement site um, that was the last major rain we had that summer it was essentially a drought from there on uh, we we took up water pump pumped all the water out washed the basement walls with the power wash that you saw there and um, we were putting in icfs the next day so you can see we got this the first day of icf construction and you can still see the water ponding puddles all around the footing it was that made a glorious mess but you know it we worked through it and um, they just mainly most of the house icfs are all house House basement walls are mainly constructed here. 
um, they'd go just together like Lincoln Logs. It was, it, or not Lincoln Logs, Legos. And um, it went together really well. Um, I think, uh, if I remember right, about three days of Lego construction for the ICFs um, to do the frost walls for the garage and uh, the basement walls for the house. And uh, we had a bunch of P-Rock we put in to kind of absorb the mud, mud and water from the rain that we had a, you know, several days prior. But you can see here, this is the front of the garage. We've got three, um, you can see the cutouts for the service door and three garage doors. And uh, it was straight across the front and then a bump out. And then um, there's a, uh, you can see it's a really deep garage. We actually have uh, a 26 foot deep garage and a 30 foot by 30 foot addition on the north side of the garage. That's where uh, my wood shop, my wood uh, woodworking shop will be. And here's, you can see there are the bracing that we got from uh, Energy Wise Building Products all the way around. And here's the pumper truck. Footing, footing and, fr um, fr uh, not footing, frost wall and uh, basement wall pouring. We got our concrete from uh, Hopkins uh, Sand and Ready Mix. They're out of uh, uh, West Central um, Wisconsin and East Central Minnesota. Um, it's where we actually get all of our concrete from. We did, uh, it went really pretty well. Uh, it was other than the heat. It was, it was, it was hot that day. Um, and I, you can see here piles of dirt that we have left over. And we pretty much are done with our concrete pour here at this point. Um, we got uh, all of our footings and, uh, not footings, sorry, frost walls and uh, basement walls all poured at this point. And trucks are cleaned out and heading, heading out. He's just, uh, I think he's clearing out the pumper right here. After the walls are poured, then you just, you know, you with the with the braces, you just run a string along them, and slightly turn the the screws to push the walls out to make everything plumb. And you can see I'm I'm wet, dirty, sweaty. It's uh it was hot that day. That's all I can say. You see, this is before we straighten the walls. There's still a still a curve. You have a curve going in in. So when you when you want to straighten your walls, you actually push them out to straighten up the wall. And these were Stronghold ICFs. Is the brand we used. So I had my um, older brother, my younger brother, and me. So we had three people doing the the, the wall pour. Plus the you know the pumper truck guy was running the pumper, obviously. And all done. So after the walls were poured, I uh, dug around the outside of the basement walls and the inside of the basement walls, and we put in a sump pump. We have notorious water issues in our in our ground basements up here so you definitely want to have tile inside and outside of your of your uh, basements so and then we poured the floor in the basements i had another neighbor i had a neighbor come at uh, he does he does concrete and you can see here we lowered uh, he was down there just doing the finish work here and we were lowering the power trawl down in there with the excavator while he was doing the finish work on the basement floor me and my older brother were uh working on doing some fill in the garage, but you can see here the basement floor is poured. So 
we wanted to get that poured first and then um, obviously we wanted to get that done before you do the put the cap on the on the basement walls but we were hauling dirt and uh, filling out in for the for the garage walls and here's the all the lumber showing up for the truss these are the truss the roof truss and then we put floor truss in the for the uh, basement wall or basement house edition section And um, here we're working on that, attaching the first some of the floor joists to the house. And you can see we got the floor truss already installed, running from the garage over to the house. And we've got a few pieces of plywood laying out there just to to get between the house and the garage. And we were setting the carrying the floor truss in with the boom on the skid steer. So we just said reach over there and set them in place. We have about a I think it's about a 20-foot boom, and then um, here we have the the decking on the on the basement all done, and we're hauling more dirt in the up against the basement wall there between the house and the garage, and we put in about six inches and run a compactor over it and get it good and firmed up. Um, the, we had uh, using the payloader in the pit to haul to load dirt into our little dump truck. Here I'm starting to set the grade for the concrete, and I have all of uh, I put floor drains under all three garage stalls. So this is Minnesota, and the garage is gonna be warm, so water's gonna drip off the off your vehicles. So you gotta have floor drains and be able to wash the floor when you want to. And you can see we got put dirt up along all of the along all the way around to hold the walls in place. We didn't want any cracking. We had some small, you now tenth, fifteen hundredths, amount of rainfalls, sh rain showers, um, but that was about it. So then we also took the opportunity to excavate around the north side of the house, the existing house, and a little bit of the west side, um, to fix the water issues we have in the basement. And we uh, power washed the walls a couple times, and then uh, fixed up a little, a few of the mortar joints. And then we applied a primer that you can see this blue stuff here. There's a primer, sticky stuff. And then we coated it um, with this uh, roll of resisto, it's called. It's just a water barrier. And then over the top of the water barrier, I put one inch thick uh, uh, pink styrofoam from uh, Menards to give a little bit more insulation value to the to the old basement. We're laid down, laid down um, insulation underneath the, the concrete in the garage and the shop, the wood shop. And we're starting our layout for in a, a PEX tubing for our in-floor heat. Um, we have uh, nine loops, uh, four in the shop, the 30 by 30 wood shop, and five loops in the in the 26 by 40 garage. And you see here's all of our, our our loops. And the cat was there doing an inspection for us. And it's concrete pour day. Um, I was fortunate. I had uh, plenty of help. I had uh, myself and my two brothers and uh, my neighbor and his brother came and uh, another friend came and then I also had a uh, another neighbor that did, that did concrete for a living that came and and uh, it re it really worked out well there was there was plenty of people and several people that were very knowledgeable um, in pouring concrete and uh, you can see here this is my neighbor and his brother and once we got pouring, me and my brother, we've poured, me and my younger brother, we've poured lots of concrete and we're fairly good at, you know, pouring the concrete and uh, doing the screed out. But the finish work, um, we're not quite as, we're not quite as good at and, you know, the more hands the better. Um, 
and we have a, a power screed which just is a lifesaver uh, in these these concrete pours and this pour was big enough and far enough away it's it's 60 feet from the from the front of the garage to the back of the shop so we had a pumper truck which you know saves the day as well it's well worth the money but the the power screed it just it's it's so much saving on the back and here's the cat doing an inspection again um <laughs> and of course getting in the way but uh we um we didn't use uh steel rebar um our uh icf uh salesman kind of recommended this stuff called gator bar it's it's fiberglass um rebar it's uh, supposedly as strong as regular rebar and just a whole lot lighter and easier to work with um so that's what we used here and we use zip ties um another uh, a couple of people recommended just instead of doing you know you wire tie the rebar together you just zip ties and that that worked really slick um to tie all the rebar together and uh yeah it uh we um, didn't uh, saw cut out the concrete. We used these uh, little strips you might have seen there sitting on the foundation wall. They look like a little T thing. I call them zip strips. They um, you pour you you uh, pour your concrete, street it off, and then you just lay these little strips. They're about an inch tall. You're gonna see me pushing it into the concrete right there, um, and it forms a stress line. Um, in the concrete so that's where the concrete will crack when it when concrete cracks so there's two types of concrete the stuff that has cracked and the stuff that will crack and um so that's what we did we didn't guys i didn't really want cut lines in the concrete it's just hard to, a little bit harder to keep clean um but so we put these zip strips in and uh and uh and that's where the concrete's cracked and it's 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 cracked right where we wanted it to so you see it's a fairly fairly large surface once you you can see once we get it poured here um like i said my neighbor and the my neighbor and the with and his brother and the other neighbor they they know concrete um and so this 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 went very well and it was early in the morning so it was before the heat of the day and uh versus the the one we did the uh, walls that was I, I think they showed up like 11 o'clock. It was it was hot. It was hot, um, but this this wasn't too bad, um, and we we got her done. I think we poured uh, 24 yards in. I think it was under two hours. We poured 24 or 26 yards of concrete. Um, once the pour was complete here, um, pretty much myself and my two brothers we uh, kind of, and, and other than my uh, two neighbors they were the the finishing guys and I so appreciate the the work they did it's it's an, it's an exquisite floor um they uh they just they they they've done this before they're quite good at it and i really appreciate all the all the help they provided during this project because uh the the floor concrete's one th the one thing you, you just once it's done it's done you know there's not a lot you can do about it and do with it, <laughs> it gets awful hard <laughs> so um again after we screeded it off you can see my neighbor he, oh here's here's the pain writing the check uh so after it was screeded off um you can see my neighbor was there with a bull float and then here they are with uh, a power trawl they power trawled it i think three or four times um, and then after it was done power trawling late in the day, I uh, sprayed it with uh, with the sealer. And see here, we had two power trawls going, and uh, that was that. We're on to framing next. <laughs> 